Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is October 15th, 2018. Happy Monday, everybody. Take a look at our solar conditions right now. Our solar wind speeds are sitting at a current 580, I'm sorry, it's at a 590.4 uh, kilometers per second with a density right now of right around 5.51. Taking a look at our KP indices for today, we're sitting in a KP of three. Our 24 hour max was also a three. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be expected low KP indices of two, but then on um, Wednesday, we are expected a KP of four. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Solar wind though is coming at a pretty good clip. Taking a look at our SDO, well, not much going on except for the two sunspots that we have right here. And those active regions are actually small and they pose no threat for any large solar flares or any solar flares at this point. Uh, some might even say these will be gone by tomorrow morning. And take a look at our TSI for October 7th, 2018. We came in with a reading of 1360.7584. I'll be really interested to see what the TSI did on the 10th of October when our storm Michael had made landfall. Just want to remind everybody of that. Taking a look, our first headline of the night, a severe thunderstorm here hits Queensland, Australia, October 11th. This is old news, still worth reporting though. Uh, and there is a very important key to this as well. Severe thunderstorm hit parts of Queensland on Australia on October 11th, 2018, producing destructive tornado and dumping heavy rain, extremely damaged extremely damaging as well up to tennis ball sized hail the hardest hit was south burnet where authorities are still determining whether the region should be declared a disaster zone numerous homes and cars were damaged and entire crops were destroyed right before harvest time that's kind of the reason why i reread this story for tonight and like i said i know it's old news but that key word right there another storm that we're getting this late in the game and we're also seeing uh, more crop damage due to extreme and heavy weather right now. About a thousand households have made insurance claims according to the Insurance Council of Australia. And nearly 3.93 inches of rain fell in some parts after 9 o'clock local time. Hailstones up to 10 centimeters in diameter. Uh, Queensland SES responded to more than 360 calls for help. As the Weather Bureau issued warning after warning, rain poured across Brisbane and the southeast and winds and hail did vast damage in a belt from King Ori to, uh, I believe that's uh, Gimpy or maybe Jimpy. I don't know. It's Australian. And on top of Maryborough, the South Bundaberg, the Courier Mail. Tornado hit Tansy about 1512 local time carving a narrow trail of destruction as it headed for the coast. Leave you guys the link in the description. Take a look at some of the footage that we'd seen here on the net. Here's a small clip from this video here. Look, that's tornado on the ground right there. Not a good idea, folks. If you're not a trained weather chaser, uh, I would not drive towards it. This guy just said, all right. Yeah, shit. Turn around. Um, and here is just some more footage of the damage from the storm afterwards. Um, not nothing, nothing really huge. Uh, we haven't heard of any reports of any deaths at this time. But I tell you something, there was a woman who saved her baby. Look at this. Uh, Mari had read this to me earlier today and told me about how this young lady here had shielded her baby from the hail that fell during the snow. This hailstorm. I mean, she is absolutely pelted. So this ain't no joke, folks. When you see hail that big, you can't you can't be out in it. And obviously, she had no intentions of being in it, but she had to protect her baby, and this was the price she paid. Thankfully, the baby is okay, and she's probably just in a lot of pain right now. I can imagine for the next several days. Early season snowfall way below average temperatures in the United States, according to Watcher News. Cold Canadian air is plunging much of the United States below to much below normal temperatures, especially across the high plains, uh, Norcast, uh, forecasters said here for October 15th. Meanwhile, heavy rains continue across the southern plains as moist air rides over this cold front. 
First snow of the season was reported in the Rocky Mountains to the Great Plains, upper Midwest, on October 14th. Way ahead of schedule, the heaviest snowfall occurred in the mountains and higher elevations of Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico. Uh, however, few inches of snow also coated the ground in such states as Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Heavy rain is possible over parts of the southern plains on October 15th and freezing rain over southwestern Texas into New Mexico, as National Weather Service forecasters had warned. Temperatures will be about 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. It's about 20 to 35 Fahrenheit below average in parts of southern central plains into the southern Rockies. Uh, I was in the chat before this show had started. A gentleman had reported from Texas that he was sitting at 102 just a couple of weeks ago. Now he's all the way down to 43. Uh, not the kind of uh, temperature drop-off he was expecting. But let's look at the temperature map right now. And we can see this big dip here in the jet stream as this cold Canadian air rushes through the United States. Uh, we are just now getting into some of that cooler air here in the northeast as that front with all the rain that we've had today is finally pushing off to the east and it's bringing uh, cooler air with it. Not only that, but not once but twice are we going to see a chance of some snow showers here in New York and in the northeast. I'll get into that here in a bit. But just proof here that we're seeing temperatures in the 40s and some spots in the 30s. As low as Dallas, Texas right now, you're sitting at 44 degrees now what's the average right now it's closer to about 60 degrees in dallas as the average for this time of year so significant temperature drops and their high temperatures weren't uh, much warmer than what we're looking at right now as well so very cold air is filtering its way through the united states as we speak right now it says here a front extending from the lower great lakes southwestern into the western gulf will move eastward off the northeast coast by Tuesday morning, October 16th, the southern half of the boundary will linger over the southeast into the Gulf Coast by Wednesday. Now, showers and thunderstorms will develop along and ahead of the front from parts of Ohio Valley, the central App Appalachian, southwestward to the lower Mississippi Valley into parts of southern plain, western Gulf Coast. That will move eastward to the mid-Atlantic southward <laughs> to the uh, western Gulf. You know, a little bit of advice here, uh, watchers. Just get yourself a map and put it in motion because, uh, boy, is this a tongue tire. Anyway, I'll leave the link in the description. Here we have the anomaly map that shows the, uh, the temperature anomalies over the last couple of days, how we've cooled off. And it shows that cooler air moving its way into the northeast and that bright purple uh, through October 18th. And then we get a bit of a slight warm up in the northeast, but more cold air funneling in behind that by the end of the month and uh, looking at a different perspective of this uh, temperature anomaly map there is a trend to this and it sure looks like that the United States and Canada is going to see a lot more of this colder air uh, than say we are in Eurasia right now and it looks like from last year I remember the cold air blast in the UK and constantly in the European nations and now it looks like that this year we might see the cold. If we're already looking at colder air like this arriving this early, um, the pattern has definitely shifted that yin and yang type pattern. Last year it was Europe that got drilled with a lot of cold weather. We did too, but not quite as early as we're looking at right now, according to this anomaly map. And some bad news out of France, by the way. Metro France issued a red alert for rain and flooding for the Department of Aude in southwestern France on early Monday morning, October 4, 15, 2018. The region received an exceptional amounts of rain in just several hours, causing major flash flooding, which in at least 13 people lost their lives. Around 12 inches of rain fell in just six hours. Four months of rain in October already, and we're only halfway through the month. The Aude River has already reached flood levels not seen in a hundred years. Where have we heard that? Another hundred year flood going on. The rain was produced by remnants of Hurricane Leslie. This is believed to be the worst flooded area since 1891. Uh, a couple people that were keeping an eye on the storm was Rob and Starman. And they had, uh, hopefully people had paid attention because they were warning of such a rain and possibilities of flash flooding as well. According to special bulletin released by Metro France Toulouse at 8 o'clock UTC time, exceptional rain accumulations between 6 and 12 inches were recorded. 
Um, gives a couple more areas that got uh, 11.6 inches of rain was the Tribs in the out again the Labstide Rorier at 7.44 inches of rain Lavour picked up around 3.18 inches of rain here we're looking at flood levels and stages here all schools colleges and high schools and departments of the out are closed Firefighters res responded to more than 250 incidences overnight. At least 13 people have been killed. Uh, one of the victims was a woman swept away by floodwaters in the town of Villar Donnell. Five others were found dead in another village. Six helicopters were scrambled to rescue people from the roofs of their home, but bad weather was making operations difficult. It says we have stranded people on rooftops. We are going to have to use aircraft to evacuate them because we cannot reach them by boat. Given the force of the water, it's too dangerous. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. I can only imagine crop damage in this area as well. <clears throat> and a little bit more bad news from Su Sumatra here, West Sumatra, as if this region has not had enough bad news. At least 27 people have been killed and dozens are still missing after heavy rain caused severe flash flooding landslides across Indonesian island of Sumatra. The worst affected was North Sumatra with 18 reported casualties, West Sumatra with eight and Rio with one. This region is just entertaining its raining se rainy season as more heavy rain floods landslides are expected in days, weeks, and the months ahead. And I wanted to show this, uh, here's some of the pictures from this area that is receiving a lot of this bad weather right now and this is just the beginning of the rainy season there is a map down here i wanted to show you guys real quick this is what our accumulated rain totals are going to be in that region over the next several days this goes all the way through about mid-october uh, and we're reaching estimates around 12 inches the maximum looks about 12 to 13 inches of rain in some areas but uh, this is just the very beginning of their rainy season, which goes from now through, I believe it's this, uh, October through February. So uh, this is the reason why they're expecting more bad weather conti to continue. So not only are we dealing with earthquakes, landslides, and of course, heavy rain from their typical rainy part of the year. And I wanted to go to a couple articles. Um, this one here might cause for scare if you're an alcoholic uh, or if you just like beer but the facts are a little distorted i've seen this article surfacing a few different times today in different social media sites and it's talking about how climate change to cause dramatic beer shortages and i thought about this for a minute and we've seen michael that just completely ripped apart parts of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, crops have already been damaged from Hurricane Florence in North Carolina and South Carolina. And now we're dealing with crop damage in Georgia. In fact, Mari was telling me this morning that the cotton uh, crops have been uh, totally destroyed in parts of Georgia right now. And now we see the article about how if... Um, you know, if this climate change keeps up, this global warming, we're going to have dramatic increases in beer prices. I already talked about this a couple weeks ago where I uh, thought it was 50 pounds. It was, it was not 50 pounds. I apologize. I forget the word again, what exactly, but it was not 50 pounds of beer. Uh, I think we'd all freak out if that was the case. But, um, but I just found it interesting that global warming wants to now start talking about um, crop failure. And they're going to blame these extreme... Um, weather events on global warming and speaking uh, from the global warming department uh, Al Gore has something that he would like to ask everyone right now I'm super super cereal and my pig is in there and we have to kill him while we all have the chance on cereal and I'm saying it I'm calling it cereal but everyone just keeps digging Poor Al. Poor Al. Well, anyway, I wanted to get you guys ready for another Al Gore sighting. 
he wants to now jump on Hurricane Michael and just like the Weather Channel uh, meteorologist that kept claiming over and over again how he's never seen uh, a hurricane this intense uh, hit the United States this close, you know, just all kinds of stuff. But yet we already know that there were two others that were stronger that hit us, uh, one in 35 and one in 1969. Very spread out. I get it. Uh, the first one's almost 100 years apart. And then, of course, uh, the one in 69. But, you know, we can't take you serial, Mr. Gore. I'm sorry. He's using that October surprise report from the IPCC. He continues to refer to Earth's atmosphere as an open, open sewer. I love that. Uh, Gore said the scientists behind the U.N torqued up their warning in hopes of getting attention off of policymakers worldwide. Glor, <laughs> Glor, <laughs> Gore shared his 2007 Nobel Peace Prize with the IPCC, the group that put together the UN report for drawing attention to the issue of man-made climate change. Oh, so it's their fault. But yet, we have to take Mr. Gore serious, correct? If you say so, buddy. So taking a look here, they start talking about Trump. Uh, Trump's administration response to the UN report, however, has been muted despite the science's extremely uh, strong calls for expedite change. And what they mean by that is we have to do something right now drastic. And the costs, some of the price tags I've seen too, I know Canada's carbon tax was something around $5,500, I think, per taxpayer. Um, these were the things that were needed to be done in order to get a grip on man-made CO2 emissions. The thing that I wonder here the most is when we start cooling in the next few years into the decade coming up into 2030, and with cooler temperatures, eventually we'll be lower CO2 I just wonder if these Mickey Mouse circus type taxes are still around in 2025 and 2028 and we're all freezing our buns off. The same group of people like Al Gore are going to be telling you, well, well, we overdid it. Sorry, guys. We taxed you too much. We, we, you know, we held back all that CO2 and now it's cold. So let's go ahead and start burning those fossil fuels again and get the planet back on track. Except this time, it's not going to be that easy. And it'll be too late. And then they'll really be exposed for the frauds that they are. Talking about climate change. And the taxes that are tied to this climate change. Especially the Paris Climate Accord. Which the president did pull us out of in 2017. And interesting enough. We had an interview on 60, second, 60 Minutes last night. I wish it was 60 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to comment about the rest of this interview. But I did want to point out that uh, Leslie Stahl sat down with President Trump to cover a bunch of things, including Hurricane Michael, which claimed 19 lives in the Florida panhandle. Um, Stahl asked Trump if he still thinks climate change is a hoax. And he says, look, I think something is happening, something's changing, and it'll all change back again. I don't think it's a hoax. I think there's probably a difference, but I don't know that it's man-made. And, and what struck me with that comment was that He's using that logical reasoning. If you don't believe he has any at all, I get that. I understand. But to me, this is without the science in front of him. He's just asking the question. I don't know if it's man-made. He's not totally convinced, and a lot of people in his administration aren't either, or they wouldn't tell him to say these things. So then they say, well, it appears he's changed his tune. No, not really. He's just saying he's not convinced that it is man-made. And he says here, I don't want to uh, give trillions and trillions of dollars. I don't want to lose millions and millions in jobs. I want to be, I don't want to put us in a disadvantage. But Stahl was more interested in hearing what Trump had to say about the actual proof of the changing climate. When she said she wished he could go to Greenland to watch huge chunks of ice falling into the ocean and raising sea levels, Trump wasn't having it. He, he stopped her and said, you don't know whether or not that would have happened with or without man. You don't know. And I like how he ends it here at the very end. You'd have to show me the scientist because 
They have a very big political agenda, Leslie. And he's not lying. That That's truth. I mean, you guys can say what you want about how terrible of a guy he is and you know, how much you hate him and everything. But, uh, you know, I got to highlight some of these things because this is what I believe is what's keeping him from making more regulations in the EPA. And this is why he is pulling back because he's been shown the numbers. He's been shown the science that CO2 is not causing man-made global warming. In fact, he's also been shown the numbers how small of a percentage that uh, CO2 actually has to do with man or our emissions have to do with uh, any kind of climate change whatsoever. So we kind of beat that report into the ground here, the Grand Solar Minimum Channel, over and over and over again. Uh, today I made a comment. They were uh, NOAA.gov was at it again fearing it up about Alaska looking at warmer temps right now. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it's normal for uh, Alaska in these grand solar minimums to heat up. And no, we're not quite yet into one, but we are in the beginning stages of it. We are declining into one. So it's not a surprise to me to see warmer than normal temperatures in Alaska right now. And I made that comment that it's normal to just see um, these temperatures warming up in Alaska and other places cooling down. And, of course, uh, this time, Noah didn't even bother replying to me. They sent their cronies after me, uh, two or three of them, actually, that were uh, trying or attempting to troll me for being a believer in the solar cycles and believing that these solar cycles have a lot to do with our global temperatures. The maximums have everything to do with warming, just like the minimums have everything to do with cooling. It goes both ways, guys. I'm not saying I don't believe that the world ever warms. I'm just saying it's the sun, stupid, basically, in, in a nutshell. But when I got a little backup today from our Facebook warrior, Penelope, and she, of course, had the right thing to say with a very brilliant uh, response, left a little link in here. And the one thing I want to commend her with is that no matter how vicious or how brutal anybody from the AGW is being towards anyone who believes in the opposite of man-made global warming, it doesn't matter. Uh, she kills them with kindness. And amazingly enough, the trolling stopped. No more comments. In fact, her link pretty much shut them up. They didn't have an answer. They didn't have a response. So... Good job on her uh, end as well, just for kind of just, you know, nipping it at the bud here. They were trying to uh, give me a hard time about believing in uh, solar cycles. Another person was telling me that we're not in a grand minimum and, you know, just blah, blah, blah. And that I made that up, that I made up in my head that Alaska warms during grand minimums. That was a made up fact, uh, according to another commenter. But hey. I'm just a guy that reports on it and absorbs some of the information and tries to retain this information. That way, if I do get into somewhat of a climate debate, I can back it up with facts. But instead of someone coming back to me with a fact of their own, it was an ad hominem attack. The comment that I'm just making this up in my head. Okay, whatever. That's all you got. Um, you don't have anything else except for this guy. And he's really super serial. So, moving right along, we see the temperatures across our country dipping into the fall-like temperatures. The east and west coast, you guys are hanging on in some warmer weather. I wanted to show you guys our snow anomaly map here. And this is just from here until the 25th, so the next 10 days. Now, just because we see the snow buildup out here, Say, for instance, here in the Northeast, if you guys take a look at uh, Western New York, all right, we're seeing about four inches of snow. That is not going to stick around, okay? I'm just showing you this map, the possibility of how much we can accumulate uh, during this 10-day period, but that doesn't mean this sticks. This is just what is going to fall from the sky. Now, what's going on up here in Canada? That's a totally different story. All right, that stuff's sticking. But down here in the Northeast, we just started really getting that cooler air this week. Now, I do expect to see some lake effect snow 
for the central part of New York uh, tomorrow, tonight, and tonight. And then Wednesday, Wednesday into Sunday, we get a shot too. So let's take a look at the GFS. The south stays wet. Texas is flooding, definitely. More of that Gulf moisture. And here's that snow chance I started talking about. Uh, and I believe a lot of this, the winds are coming out of the west, and you can see it here on Tropical Tidbits. So this will definitely be lake effect. And as the day continues, that second shot of cold air on Wednesday will finally make its way into western New York around the Buffalo area and the south towns. You guys could see a couple of inches. And even parts of as far south as Albany could see some snow as well. But this little indication right here, this little swath, from the lakes, I believe is this will be the lake effect snow that will be affected uh, New York the most. And that's on Thursday, like still a chance of snow through the area. And we warm up just a little bit, but we go into the weekend. And once again, the rainstorms start firing up across the south into the Ohio Valley, across the northeast. Once again, more rain. And then by Saturday, here is our second cold front that's coming through late this week. And this one won't dip quite as far into Texas like initially thought, but this is going to clip the Ohio Valley into the northeast Pennsylvania, Erie, Pennsylvania. This is where you get a really good shot of a chance for uh, some lake effect snow. Cleveland, Ohio, northeast Ohio, you guys could see some snow as well into Sunday. And I think Sunday is the better chance. Look at here, guys, especially in western New York. And I'll go ahead and zoom it in just a little bit. Um, this is the Rochester, Syracuse, all the way stretching out to close to Albany. Pretty good chance you could see at least a couple inches of snow just from lake effect. And that's from that westerly winds, that cold, cold Canadian air uh, going over to rather, rarely um, warmer than usual waters right now over Lake Erie. And we have not seen hardly any cold weather yet to kind of get these temps down. So expect some Lake effect snows for sure this Sunday, at least a 24 hour event before that finally dies out. Temperatures kind of rebound a little bit. Radar once again indicating some mixture into Tuesday, the 23rd of October. I'll tell you what, the Northeast is going to have its fair share of moisture uh, for sure. While the South gets a little bit of a timeout, um, once again, we're looking at snow Wednesday, October 24th. More cold air. Uh, reinforcing the area once again in the northeast uh, especially western pennsylvania most of pennsylvania and as we move through october 25th that moisture moves off high pressure kind of settles in on the northeast stays dry meanwhile we got a pretty decent sized low pressure system moving across the country into that weekend and it could be a soaker into the northeast by the 28th 29th and into halloween we got to keep our eyes on this because I've seen a couple different runs of this and this snow is trying to work something here in this low pressure system on the 28th and 29th. A couple different models have shown snow in New York as well. So we're just going to have to keep our eyes on the temperatures to see if that kind of weather is favorable. But we are definitely going to see some cooler temperatures here throughout the Northeast and the Northwest will continue to see uh, temperature is also starting to cool off. Is that high ridge? The west coast stays warm for the most part. Uh, into the middle part of the country, higher elevations will see snow showers. There's that colder air dipping in to the Wisconsin, Minnesota area, but not going across the southern plains like it was uh, this week. So good news for you folks out there. And then, of course, more snow moving in through the northeast as a pattern change happens here where we get high pressure, cold fronts on the northwest and the northeast. And let's take a look at our ocean temperatures. I still feel like these um, temperatures do not represent what we're looking at here on the 3-4 index here for the El Nino. I could be wrong, but um, along with other people in the GM GSM community, uh, we don't feel that these anomalies match this temperature map. I don't at least. And here we have our North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly back under baseline once again, as it's stayed there. For the it's It's been above baseline three times since April of 2018. So for the most part, we've been in the neutral this year with the North Atlantic temperature and suspect it will only get colder as the season continues here in the Northern Hemisphere. Take a look at our current radar right now, uh, looking at showers in the South Dallas, the Houston area, uh, you guys have uh, enough rain. I know, enough rain. 
Same with Alabama, parts of showers in Georgia, and a line of thunderstorms moving through eastern Tennessee into North Carolina as we speak into Virginia. Showers wrapping up here in upstate New York as it's moving into parts of Vermont and Maine as well. Other than that, guys, um, no major hurricanes on the horizon, but we can take a look together if you'd like because I'm all about being fair. And I'm pretty sure that we're not going to be looking at any type of... Um, that's not what I want. But that's what I'm getting, I guess. So I guess this is the part of the show that I'd like to ask Mari to say hello to everybody and thank everyone for being a part of tonight's broadcast. Mari, how are you doing tonight? I am fabulous. I'm just trying to help Rob choose a new material. He says he has, I forgot now, steel boxers on. I told him to try Kevlar. He said it's not strong enough. As always, we have a, an excellent group of people in the chat. Even Milky Way Weekly popped in the chat. We got Kate, Radical Gardener, Rob, Miss C. Gypsy, Carlton, a few other people. Grant is sharing links. I don't have everything in front of me. Sorry, guys. But it is a pleasure. Happy Monday. And uh, we'll be back in the chat tomorrow. Can't wait for more of this. Yeah, also want to say hello to Brian myself. Um, got your message earlier. I will get back to you. We are planning to do a little chat with Brian on his YouTube channel. So check out uh, Milky Way Weekly, his YouTube channel as well. Um, but we're going to be a guest on his program. We're just ironing out what date and everything. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us tonight. I really appreciate everyone who tuned in tonight. Please be sure to like and share. And we will talk soon, guys. Take care.